Hey everyone, how are you all doing? So today it's gonna be a really interesting video as I've got some latest and important questions on AWS Cloud Practitioner exam CLF C02. So in case you are also preparing for the exam and you're done with the theory, then this is your chance to validate your understanding with the real exam like questions. And also my friends, until now we have taken so many questions in the previous videos as well. So in case you're not able to understand any particular question, then do let me know in the comment section. I will really try to answer. And why just me? You can also get your answer from all the viewers that are watching these videos. And during the course of the video, my friends, I will also share some legit AWS official documentation so that you can validate the answer and also do some self-study. So now let's dive in straight away to the very first question for today. Here it comes. So let's begin the part 29 with question number 221. But friends, before I jump into the question, I really want to bring your focus here that all the documentation that I'm using in this episode or I have used in past or maybe in the subsequent episodes, all the documentation, all the official AWS documentation is logged in this one document here. So for example, if you want to see what was the documentation for the episode number three, you can just come here, click onto this and you will get all the documentation that we referred in the episode number three. Likewise, you can find all the AWS official documentation in one single document. And the best part is this documentation is absolutely free for you. Link is given in the description box. So please take full advantage of the same. And now let's jump on to this question here that says that which duties are responsibility of a company that is using AWS Lambda and you have to choose two correct options. Your options are option A, security inside of the code. Option B, selection of CPU resources. Option C, patching of operating system. Option D, writing and updating of code. And option E, security of underlying infrastructure. And the correct answer for this question is option A, security inside of the code. And then option D, writing and updating of the code. So what exactly is AWS Lambda? Well, to start with, it is a compute service and this is given here that you can run the code without provisioning or managing the servers, creating the workload aware cluster scaling logic, maintaining event integrations and managing the runtime. In very simple words, Amazon AWS Lambda is nothing but where you write a piece of code and deploy that into the cloud infrastructure. And for this, you do not have to worry about the infrastructure or the underlying servers or anything for that matter. You just write the code in the language that you prefer. For example, Python, Go, Java and many more and just deploy the same. The cloud provider will give you all the infrastructure and also the best part is it also provides you automatic scaling. And to scale up your understanding, you can read all the use cases given here. So you can use the AWS Lambda in web application. The use case is explained here. You can also use it for machine learning, data processing. And not only that, you can also understand what are the different products. You can also understand what are the different tiers given in the AWS Lambda. And also I have one more documentation here that explains you why AWS Lambda. So here, once again, to reiterate the concept, AWS Lambda is a complete service that runs your code in response to the events and automatically manages the compute resources, making it fastest way to turn your idea into modern production serverless applications. And once again, the benefits are listed here. So you can read about them. It's in a QA format, so you can read that. And of course, you can also understand how exactly this AWS Lambda works. So here you can see that we have this AWS S3 bucket. We also have this AWS Lambda, which is getting triggered based on some event. And based on this trigger, it is doing something. For example, in this case, when you're uploading an image into the S3 bucket, the AWS Lambda or the functions gets triggered. And when the code inside the AWS Lambda is triggered, this will resize the photograph. So basically it generates a thumbnail for you. And similarly, you can write the AWS Lambda or the code for virtually any trigger that are available. So a really wonderful service, AWS Lambda. And the counterpart service in Microsoft Azure is Azure Functions. Moving on to the next question, question number 222 that says, which compute hosting model should be accounted for the total cost of ownership, which is also known as TCO, when undertaking a cost analysis that allows physical isolation of a customer workload? 
and your options are option a dedicated host option b reserved instances option c on demand instances and option d no upfront reserved instances and the correct answer is but wait for a second let me give you what are the main keywords given in this question and that is this one given here that says physical isolation so now that we have to implement the physical isolation for the customer workload the best option would be option a dedicated hosts why so because amazon ec2 dedicated host allows you to use your eligible software licenses from the vendors such as microsoft oracle on amazon ec2 so that you get the flexibility and the cost effectiveness of using your own licenses and when it comes to the physical isolation of your customer workload amazon ec2 dedicated host is the best choice and with that let's jump on to the next question question number 223 that says a company needs to simultaneously process hundreds of requests from different users which combination of aws services should the company use to build an operationally efficient solution now the options given are option a amazon simple queue service or amazon sqs and amazon aws lambda which we just read in the previous question then we have option b aws data pipeline and amazon ec2 option c amazon kinesis and amazon athena and then option d aws amplify and aws app sync and friends in these kind of questions it's very important that you are able to identify the main keywords or the main sections given in the question and in this question in particular the main keywords are these ones which says simultaneously process hundreds of requests from different users and this tells us that we are going to have hundreds and thousands of requests which are coming on the same time so there will be multiple requests at any given point of time and your applications your servers should be able to handle the same and in case they are not able to process the request as it is coming then it should have some mechanism to hold the request for some time until it is processed and with that in mind the best option or the best solution would be option a amazon simple queue service or amazon sqs or amazon lambda now we have already read about the amazon lambda in the previous question so let me take you through the amazon sqs see first of all you have to understand that amazon simple queue service or amazon sqs it lets you store and receive messages between the software components at any volume without losing messages or requests or other services to be available and that you can also understand in this picture given here so basically on the left you have some producer and the producer is the one who sends the messages to the amazon sqs so basically these are the requests that are coming to the amazon sqs now let's say that you have an amazon lambda or some piece of code that is written to process all of these requests in that case what amazon sqs will do it will hold all the requests until your application or the code that you have written is able to process the same so please read all the documentation given in the description box but for now let's jump on to the next question question number 224 which of the following is the key concept of aws cloud security and your options are option a shared responsibility model option b encryption at rest only option c single factor authentication and option d no access control for shared resource and the correct answer for this question is option a shared responsibility model Now friends let me quickly take you through the shared responsibility model you can read all the documentation here and i have explained the shared responsibility model in quite some detail in this video so please check out the same but as a brief i can tell you that the shared responsibility model is a fundamental concept in aws cloud security and not only in aws this concept also exists in microsoft azure or google gcp so all of the cloud providers have the same concept so very important to understand no matter which exam you are taking so basically this concept defines the division of security responsibility between the aws or any other cloud provider and you as the customer So as you can see here in this picture AWS as a service provider is responsible for the regions availability zones edge locations networking databases software and many more but as a customer on the other hand you are responsible for the customer data platform application identity and access management and not just that you are also responsible for the operating system network and firewall configuration so these are the few key concepts but in case you want a detailed understanding you can always watch this video question number 225 that says which of the following is a critical design concept for architecting cloud application and your options are option a use the largest instance possible option b provision capacity for the peak load option c use the scrum development processes and option d implement elasticity 
So pretty straightforward question and the correct answer is option D implement elasticity. So let me help you crack this question here. So the first two options given in the question use the largest instance possible and provision the capacity for the peak load. Now these options both of these are against the very essence of the cloud application or moving to the cloud. So primarily cloud application or the cloud computing is just like using the resource as and when you need and pay as you go. In no scenario you should provision for the largest instance sense or the peak capacity. You as a user, you should always focus on making your application scalable that it stretches or contracts based on the peak load and that is your responsibility which is implement elasticity. And of course option C use the scrum development processes. It has nothing to do with architecting the cloud application. And once again I want to remind you that all the documentation is given in the description box. You can always download that document file absolutely free and in case friends you are looking for the PDF files containing all the questions on all these wonderful exam series both on Amazon AWS and also on Microsoft Azure. So we have series on AWS Cloud Practitioner, AZ900, DP900, AI900, DP203, AZ104 and a lot more. And in case you want to see the sample file, you can go to the download section of the techblackboard.com and there you will get the sample file and based on that you can take the decision. And friends, I want to remind you there are loads of interesting Q&A exam series that are coming up on both Microsoft Azure exams and also Amazon AWS exams. So please do not miss to subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon and also one request from my side that please like the video and comment in the comment section below because these are the only ways the YouTube actually considers these videos worth spreading and this really help us grow and keep the content free. And yes, I almost forgot to mention there are loads of videos coming up on the very cool stuff in artificial intelligence. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.